Okay, Matt, good morning. How are you? Oh, man, Kate, I'm great. How are you doing? Doing good. So have you been like taking advantage of grilling this summer? I know you've moved your toaster out to your deck, but are you doing any grilling? I have not fired up the grill yet. Yeah. Okay. Failing. Fa- not failing. Just you've got the toaster oven, right? So mm. different kind of outdoor cooking. Yeah, just not the standard summer outdoor cooking mode that most people opt for. Yeah. Okay. So I we grill out a lot and we did hamburgers and hot dogs not too long ago, but mm-hmm. I was just kind of clicking around this morning and I saw that Twitter users are going bananas over a photo of disc shaped hot dogs. Disc shaped hot dogs. Okay. Um, yes. I'm familiar with people cutting up hot dogs into miniature bites for the kids or whatever. Is that right, it? Right. But this is like a hamburger shaped hot dog. Oh. Okay. So it's about, it's the size of a hamburger? It's about the size of a hamburger. Oh. And it's got ridges so you can grill it, but it's flat so you can put more toppings on. But Twitter users are going cray cray because they're just saying, isn't this just grilled bologna? <laughs> Is it not very thick either? Or? I mean, it's thicker than, I put a picture in our notebook, Matt. Okay. But it's th- it looks thicker than bologna slices, but it does look like. Oh, yeah. I've been known to cut a hot dog to hmm. fit on a hamburger bun because I didn't have any more hot dog buns. Right. You cut it down the center? No. Cut it in half. Uh, is that not down the center? The fat way. Yeah, the, the long way. No. No. So you've got, they almost look like sausages that way. Just put them side by side? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. I've, I've put that on a, on a hamburger bun before. Gotcha. But... I thought maybe you filleted them. Filleted the hot oh, dog. Oh, no. Okay. Yeah, I'm too lazy, Matt. I just chop it in half, throw it on the bun, a little ketchup, call it good. Now, why do you think these ridges make it easier to grill? I don't, I don't know that, that it makes it easier to grill. I was oh. scrolling through the um, the article that says that you do that way you get the the char marks or the the grill marks. Okay, I'm trying to now. I'm trying to find it. I mean, I don't think it would have mattered if it would have had the ridges yeah, versus so. just the flat. Yeah. Other than trying to just make it stand out from baloney. <laughs> yeah, I mean that makes sense. I don't think this makes it any easier to grill, though. That's my point. Yeah. No, I, th- I think for aesthetics, maybe. Okay. When you've got the grill marks. That way it but, matches your ruffles. Right. They, do look like, they look like ruffle <laughs> style ridges, yeah. They do, don't they? Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So you're going to buy some of these hot dogs or what? I don't know. I don't think so. Okay. Because this, like, I'm asking where you stand. Is this just bologna on the grill? I don't know. So how much different are... Uh, Hot dogs and bologna. Are they identical? Well, I don't. I, I make sure that we get all beef hot dogs. But because I'm not eating bologna, I'm a little bit more looser with my standards. With your standards of what? <laughs> of the meat in the bologna. Like sometimes it's pork, sometimes it's beef, sometimes it's beef and chicken. Oh, so you just let your... But since I'm not eating it. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah. Since yeah. you're eating the hot dogs, you got to have all beef. I get, yes. Okay. All right. Bologna versus hot dog. I'm typing it right now. Okay. Are bologna and, and hot the dogs the same? What's that? We get the Hebrew national hot dogs. I know. Yeah. Because it's uh, the clean part of the animal. Remember you yeah. explained this to us one day because you said, yeah. what was it? What was the, the alternative? I forget. <laughs> Uh, what hot dogs are made of? Yeah. <laughs> you don't want me to say it, Matt. Uh, kind of. I know. <laughs> kind of do. All right. So Quora has the deal here. Howard Field, okay. former head chef grad from Le Cordon Bleu. Okay, whatever. No, oh, fancy. I really do not know of three differences. Both are made with an emulsified meat and fat combination and put in a casing. All I can say is that all hot dogs are sausages, but not all sausages are hot dogs. And bologna is a sausage. Oh. Okay. Bologna has a combo of chicken, beef, and pork in it. But I believe that several hot dogs also do. And if you want to get picky, hot dogs are American and bologna is European. (laughs) Okay. If you... (laughs) Splitting hairs right there, right? Yeah. All right. Hot dog versus bologna. Okay. So do you want... I'm I'm sure you don't 
grill a lot of hot dogs. Do you, Matt? No, no, I can't recall the last time I cooked a hot dog just for myself. Only okay, if there was like so, a big event with lots of kids or something. And even then someone else brought the hot dogs, you know. I used to date a guy in New York. Okay. Fancy. And New, yeah. Ooh, New York no, City. Or wait, could no, be New York Buffalo. State. Buffalo. Buffalo. I mean, oh, Buffalo. Never mind. So not really okay. New York. There, is there picani sauce good there in Buffalo? <laughs> I haven't had it. Okay. But they were known, this little snack shackety place we're supposed to be known for these amazing hot dogs. So, okay, I'm touristy. I'll try. And something I learned that they did that I have done the rest of my hot dog days, because I do hot dogs for my kids, you've got your, before you put the hot dog on the grill, you make a couple of slices. You're not cutting the hot dog in half, but you're making diagonal slices on the hot dog mm-hmm. so that when you grill it, it plumps up a little bit more and it also looks pretty. But yeah. if your cuts are too big, then it'll curl up and it'll look like the letter C and it's kind of weird looking. But if you do the diagonal cuts in your hot dog, guys, when you grill, you can thank me later. Is it like a spiral or what? No, not like a spiral. I mean, it's just, it plumps up. It's a, it's a bigger dog this way. You get to really grill the whole thing, not just the outside. Yeah, cause some of its guts come out of there, yeah. Mm-hmm. Good tip, Kate. You're welcome. Yes. I know you're not going to use it, but somebody might. Thank you. I might. You never know. Yeah. You never know. You might cook hot dogs for your, your guests. Yeah. You can't use that on like a bratwurst or something? Does that do anything? I've never done it to a brat. Okay. I don't cook brats. Monty does the brats. Oh, I see. Yeah. Too uh too difficult. No, I just uh I usually when I'm cooking it's because it's just us girls and I don't give them the option for brats. Cuz well, okay, we don't always have brats on hand like we have hot dogs. I don't like brats. I don't know how to cook them. Okay. Do your kids like brats? Yeah. Uh Ellie does. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah. Ellie likes brats, but I don't know. I I don't know their uh, their science on the grill, like how long or anything like that. I've got my hot dog, I've got my chicken, I've got my beef memorized. Oh, I see. I see your hot dog. And I don't know that I've ever grilled a steak without supervision. Monty's got to supervise your steaks. Is that what you're saying? Well, not maybe like supervise, but maybe within like hollering distance to be like, how many minutes on this side? Mm. Yeah. It's kind of like, am I brave enough to do it by myself? Mm, haven't tried it yet. So where do you find these uh, hot dogs that are in basically patty form? Where do you find these? Are they for sale? Um. Oh, it's a, I, followed the, I followed the link. A butcher is selling hot dogs shaped, shaped like hamburgers, and people aren't sure what to think of it. Uh, they're, they're going bananas. They're going bananas. They're going nuts. Oh. Yeah. Bananas, you know, crazy. I do know. I do know bananas. Okay. B A N A N A S? I do. Yes, we have no bananas. <laughs> uh, Deo. Yeah. Keep going. I do like using bananas as a word for, yeah, Twitter users are going bananas, it says over here. Yeah, mm-hmm. you're right. Okay. Well, this article confirms that Twitter users specifically are going bananas mm-hmm. over disc shaped hot dogs. Okay. Uh,. Four for ten bucks. Rastelli's butcher is quite proud of themselves. Pr- proud of themselves. Yeah. Maybe. Okay. If it's four for ten bucks, that doesn't that make you think that it's a more quality hot dog? Artisanal hot dog. Yeah, made with ingredients such as pork, beef, water, salt, and more. It says here in this article. Well, I mean, like the better parts of the pig, maybe. Oh wow. That's what I meant. Yeah. Okay. Quality of meat. Maybe that's what makes it more expensive. Run out of hot dog buns? No problem. The product description on the company's website states our round dog is everything you love in the hot dog in the shape of a burger. Uh, oh, yeah, so you can uh, you can have this shipped to you, Kate. Well, there you go. Yeah, uh, packed in dry rice or something. I mean, packed in dry ice or something, maybe. Add to cart shipping. I'm only $190 away from free shipping, Kate. Oh, my. Yeah, so if you just want to get a four-pack of these three-ounce round dogs, 10 bucks subtotal, shipping 25 Yikes. 
So maybe get some other items while you were there to make it more palatable. Pardon the pun. <laughs> no, don't pardon that pun. Don't pardon it. Remember we were talking about uh, locust versus cicada? Yes. I had okay. thought that maybe they were the exact same thing. And then okay. it turns out I was wrong, right? Is that what we learned? I don't know that you were necessarily wrong, circling back to that. I don't know that you were wrong, but you... I'm only, I think in my regular life, I would say locusts, but because cicadas were all over like the social media and media outlets that they were using the word cicada, that's right. why I went with cicadas. Okay. So, so I wasn't saying like, duh, Matt, I'm going to ask you about uh, another bug that goes by several names and I'm going to ask you which you know it as. Okay. Okay. Okay, so instead of just saying, which do you say, A or B, I'm going to say, name this bug, and you'll tell me what you call it, okay? All right. I'll see how this goes. Okay. I'm a bit so scared, this but... is, no, don't be scared, because I know for a fact that you've held one of these bugs. And I don't know for a fact, because you haven't told me any stories, but I'm just thinking, certainly you have. Okay. Okay, I thought maybe you were watching me again. <laughs> in the summertime, mm -hmm. these bugs come out oh. at nighttime. Yeah. And you can see their little booty butts kind yeah. of give off some uh, light. Okay. Yeah. What do you call those bugs? I have historically called those lightning bugs. But I okay. know you might also call them a firefly. Okay. Are there any other names for it? Firefly, lightning bug. Uh, there probably is a more official one, right, than those two? I'm sure there's a more official. I'm, I guess I'm just like, have you heard anybody call it anything else besides a Fire. lightning bug or a firefly? Hmm. I feel like probably, but I can't recall what it is right now. What is it? Okay. Um, I'm with you. I grew up saying lightning bugs. Let's go catch lightning bugs, put them in a jar, poke some holes in the top, you know, that whole thing. Yeah, throw them on the concrete, step on them, and smush them so that they leave a nice... What? Fluorescent yellow streak lighting up. Oh, you never did that? You never Who? smashed one? I don't think so. Oh, really? And you could also use them as war paint, you know? Oh, gosh. Smear it on your face? Yeah, smear it under your eyes or whatever. How yeah. long does it last? Oh, not that long. Okay, so you not just keep smashing more bugs on your face? Yes. Okay. They're fairly abundant this year, I feel like. I, I think you're right. I've seen a lot. But at the same time, if you if somebody says firefly, do mm -hmm. you go, no, it's a lightning bug? You don't correct them because you know it's the same thing, right? Sure, yeah. I feel like they're probably more correct. Okay. What if somebody used the term glowfly? Uh, it would take me a minute to figure that one out. That that's what they're referring to as a firefly or a lightning bug is a glowfly? Yes. Or a glowfly or okay. a moon, moon bug. Moon bug. No. Uh -uh. Do you have a map? Is there a U.S. map? Of who There's calls? not. Oh, wah, wah. man. Yeah. A United States map of what people refer to lightning bugs would be a thrill. I know you do love your maps, Matt. Uh-huh. Yeah. I'm horrible at them, but uh, yeah. Um, it turns out America, the good old states, I don't have a map, but I can tell you we're pretty much split 44% say fireflies, 43% say lightning bugs, and they say about 1 in 20 people use a different term like glowflies or moon bugs. 1 in 20? Is that what you said? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. But they say lightning bugs is more popular in parts of the country, and people out west are, more, are twice as likely to say fireflies. How cute. So, I, yeah, but I think bug... Is cuter than fly. Does that make sense? I uh, you equate flies with gross things. Like, oh no, yeah, a gross like fly. It's so I'm all over your picnic. The flies, shoe fly, don't bother me. Yeah. Well, you also are a big fan of the true crime stuff. So a lot of times they'll use flies or their larvae or whatever, larva, lar larva, to find out how long that corpse has been there, right? Oh, I, I have not um, done any true crimes like that. Really? Yeah. Uh, that was with the original CSI. Was, it wasn't the main guy in the original CSI, a forensic I didn't watch it. bugologist or whatever. Okay. Yeah, I didn't watch CSI. <sighs> I know. Sorry. Okay. 
<laughs> um, but I think lightning bug is cute, like ladybug or cuddle bug or snug as a bug in a rug. Like it's cute, little bug. Okay. So that's why I lean towards lightning I, bugs. I follow. Versus fireflies. I like that. I like that logic. I'm still Thanks. mind blown though that you haven't in all of your true crime times, you've, you haven't had any like a forensic files where they talk about Mm-mm. bugs and how they're able to find out how someone's been dead based on how old like eggs or larvae are on. Okay. No. Man, how, how you've missed it. You've been missing out, Kate. I mean, I don't, I don't do a lot of the true, I do Dateline, but I don't do like the forensic files or CSI okay. stuff. Okay. Yeah, Dateline doesn't cover that kind of stuff. Okay. No. They just say... She went for a run and she was never seen again mm-hmm. or she was a missing person no more. They found her body in the trunk. Yeah. Yeah. And they don't say and it was riddled with. No. They just said the husband did it. It was the boyfriend. Yeah. Almost always is. Almost always is someone close to the victim. Not cool. That's not how you're supposed to treat people you love. Okay. I know. And while I feel like I annoy a lot of people I love, I don't see any of them butchering me as much as like somebody just driving by randomly while I'm running on a country road. Oh, I don't understand, but well, congrats. Yeah. That must, be, that must be a nice feeling. Oh yeah. It's not the, the person I love that's going to butcher me. It's a random stranger that goes, Hey, that lady won't be able to scream where anybody can hear her. Let's throw her in the back of the trunk. And is that why you typically work out on like a stationary uh, bicycle or something? Yes. Indoors okay. is the best. Yeah. No, I'm terrified of being kidnapped, Matt. That's like my biggest fear ever since I was a kid. Oh. But I almost feel like now as a grown up, you would think that I'd be like, oh, I'm so much stronger than I was as a kid. I could fight somebody off. I'm afraid that I'd be like obliging. I'd be like, oh, you want me to climb in the back of the trunk? Sure. I got it. Give me a boost. I'm worried that my fight or flight is going to be like, no, you just be polite and do as they ask. You'd be very accommodating to your captor. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Good, good to know, Kate. Right? I don't want to be rude. What's wrong? No, I'm just thinking about, I'm um, like shaking my head at myself. Let's just, come on, girl. Oh, for how easily abductable you seem to be? Yeah. Yeah. Or are scared to be. Yeah. That's all right, Kate. You know, until it's not. <laughs> it's true. It's okay right now. Everything's all right. At this second. Because mm-hmm. I'm safe. I'm in a safe place. I won't abduct you, Kate. Thanks, Matt. You're welcome. Matt, did you guys ever eat like uh, a regular food in your house that you thought was normal? But if you go to talk about it later on, like maybe in your adult life, people think you're weird. I am unaware of any food item that I ate growing up or really at any point in time that someone would say like, what did you do? What kind of right. concoction did your mother force upon you? And no, nothing like that I can think of. No, we we joked, uh, I think previously about going to uh, funeral dinners and, you know, where the little old ladies <laughs> of the church make these weird salads or desserts like with carrots and jello or yeah, gummy bears, know, marshmallows. Yeah. But I saw this on BuzzFeed, and I can get sucked into a BuzzFeed time warp. What's it called? BuzzFeed rabbit hole. But it was, what's the weirdest food your your family made you eat as a kid that you thought was totally normal? And one of the things that I grew up with is on this list, and I go, oh, this isn't normal? What? (laughs) Ooh, exciting. There's lots of things. Yeah, there's lots of things on this list that I'm like, say what now i don't understand but is it blank on a shingle it is in that family okay it's beef it's beef okay so this is on the list someone's parents would put leftover pot roast in a food processor mix it with miracle whip and relish and eat it on bread and they call it beef salad now (laughs) the joke and we don't do it just like that it's a little different but um my sister is not a fan of this and she calls it beef tuna and she gets like kind of grossed out when she says it, but I love it. And it's not so much pot roast. It's just like leftover roast beef. You put it in the food processor. So it's, you know, shredded. And then you put like a dollop of 
mayonnaise in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. My, my dad would always put just like a finely chopped onion in there. If I make it, I don't put the onion, but my dad would always put the onion in there and you mix it up and I don't put relish in it either. But God, Matt, this, it, I don't think this is embarrassing, but it feels embarrassing Yeah, because we would eat it on Triscuits with a, <laughs> uh, with a little pickle chip. Or you could make a sandwich. Oh, yeah. That sounds like a fun snack. Yeah. Right. And my dad, we always call it roast beef spread. Roast beef spread. Okay. Right. <laughs> As opposed to like beef salad for my sister, beef tuna. Ugh. Yeah. I have not heard of this item and congrats for uh, the BuzzFeed list matching you. Having a match yeah. of your obscure food item. It's called like beef tuna. Is that what you? That my sister calls it that. Okay, because it, it kinda ends up being like... kind of the consistency of. Yeah. To another that you mix with mayo and all that stuff. That makes sense. Yeah. 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 But uh, one of Monty's family recipes is on here too. You ever do mac and cheese with tuna? Oh, I, I avoid, I do not like tuna. So, okay. No, okay. but I'm familiar with that. I, I'm more familiar with that idea than I am with the one that beef you just referenced. Tuna. Yeah. The beef <laughs> tuna, whatever. <laughs> Okay, so this is a popular favorite for Monty's Fridays in Lent growing up. Mac and cheese with tuna and added peas in the concoction. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I could see how some people could get down with this. Um, this is another one. Applesauce jello, where you just mix jello and applesauce together. But is uh this woman's grandma would throw in red hot candies. I'm oh. like, Ooh. You kind of had me at applesauce jello. You lost me at Red Hot Candies. I don't know. I think the Red Hots would be a good compliment to the apple. Don't you? Cinnamon. Maybe. Cinnamon, Cinnamon, apple, yeah. I mean, I'm not a cinnamon person, but I could see how you could get there. No cinnamon for Kate. No. Oh, my God. I did like hot tamales. I would would eat hot tamales with my sister because I wanted to be cool like my sister. But you hated them the whole way. Oh, the whole way. They were too hot. I would bite them in half and swallow them so that I could be cool like my sister. Aw. Matt, this sounds like something you could get down with, though. Peanut butter and bacon on toast topped with gravy. Oh. You had me until the topped with gravy part, I think. Yeah. I know. I wonder what kind of gravy, though. Like, if it's like a sausage gravy? Bacon gravy? Oh, I don't know about that. Is that a thing? Is there a bacon gravy? Yeah. I mean, I guess it's just like the grease from the pan, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That, okay. Maybe. So is there, is there bacon gravy? I don't know. Oh, should I look? I guess I could search for it. Bacon gravy. Bacon gravy. I've never heard of it. Uh, me neither. But yeah, clearly sausage gravy. Bacon gravy. Bacon, bacon, fat, flour, milk, pepper, salt. From Mindy's cooking. Okay. Hmm. Discard all but two tablespoons of the bacon grease. Add flour to grease and whisk together. Cook for about a minute without burning the flour. Add milk. Whisk together. Heat until bubbling. Simmer for five to ten minutes until sauce starts to thicken. Hmm. 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 Ha. Ha. But no, uh, bacon on uh, peanut butter peanut toast. Peanut butter toast. Sounds pretty good. Yeah, that sounds good, right? The gravy on top of that. No, no, thank you. Not so much. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm out. Okay, what about this? Cold spaghetti noodles. So just cold spaghetti noodles. Lettuce. <laughs> okay. Leftover chicken. Leftover chicken. Okay. Croutons. All right. And French dressing. Hmm. Repeat that again. Okay. Cold spaghetti noodles. Yeah. Lettuce. Chicken. Yeah, that might be okay. Croutons uh-huh. and French dressing. Yeah, that might be all right. This one lady said her grandma called it president salad because that's what the presidents would eat. <laughs> I don't know if I follow. I don't know if I follow either, but I think it's sweet. She was like, we're going to have president salad tonight. This is good stuff. This is what the presidents would eat. Like, this is fit for a king. Yeah. It's like the president stumbles high into the kitchen at the White House and right. grabs leftover no- noodles, uh, some lettuce, croutons, 
leftover chicken. Okay. Yeah. French. Yeah. I'm out with dressing. French dressing. Yeah. Yeah, I'm out. We've done a pasta salad with tuna before where it's just like uh, essentially a salad, but instead of lettuce, you use pasta and a little bit of Italian dressing. Lots of tomatoes, lots of cucumbers. Yum. Mm. Um, there's also a damn if I know soup. The recipe always changed because she only made it when she had to clean out her fridge. <laughs> so just whatever happened to be kicking around the fridge that looked like, ah, yep. I might be able to incorporate this into a soup. Is that what you said? Throw it. Damn if I know soup. That's the name of it. Hmm. Is there always some kind of broth or some kind of liquid base or could soup be just a bowl full of non-liquids? A bowl full of leftovers. Yeah. Um, mock chicken is the last one that sounds like you were saying, like stumble into the kitchen at two in the morning after being out, uh, potato chips, cream of chicken soup and tuna all stacked up like lasagna. So they layered it a couple of times and they called it mock chicken. Describe it again. What are the ingredients? Potato chips. Okay. Cream of chicken soup. Tuna. Okay, so the potato chips are acting as the pasta in this? As the noodles, maybe. Okay. Yeah. I mean, Ugh. I've seen some casserole dishes with, like, potato chip crumbles on top. Sure. For, like, the salty crunch or Ritz crackers. Uh, I've, I've not seen anything where it's used as <laughs> a noodle. No. No, 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 no. Yeah, it doesn't sound right to me either. And I know a lot of people like tuna cooked like tuna noodle casserole and stuff like that i'm i'm just not one of those people i'm not a, i'm not a hot tuna person you're a cold tuna per se but i do like tuna just not hot tuna so you think you're gonna you want me to send you any of these recipes matt yeah, yeah send me all these recipes and next time i'm uh on my way to hammered i can make this i guess, make one of these i guess i don't know or you could have the applesauce jello with the red hot candies ready hmm. for when you are. So you don't have to make it when you're hammered. It's just there. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. It was nice to have the presence of mind to have food on hand for when you'll yeah. inevitably need it like that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I do think you'd like the beef tuna because I know you like roast beef. Yeah. So for anyone just joining us, beef tuna, once again, you take some roast beef, you throw it through a food processor, maybe mix some mayo with it. Mm -hmm. And then up, use chips to it's like a dip kind of deal. You could do, I have not done chips. I've done, you know, crackers with it. But if you're going to do it in a sandwich form, I like just a little bit of mayo, some pickles and some salt and you're good to go. Voila. Mm -mm -mm. Chef's kiss emoji. There you go. There you go. Oh, my Xbox is supposed to arrive tomorrow, Kate. Yeah. Okay. Did I tell you this? You have to talk. No, but you have to talk about it because last time we talked, you were trying to get it. Yeah, I still feel like it's, uh, this is so bizarre. So I told you I signed up for all kinds of alerts and it was really making me question, uh, well, everything. <laughs> so I don't like to be bugged that much with notifications. So I started following this account that does alerts for uh, video game deals, like when video games go on sale for cheap, but also alerts for when these hard-to-find consoles are available at stores, right? Right. And so, well, actually, we were at that meeting. <laughs> you witnessed this. Um, we were at that meeting the other day. Uh, big meeting with the St. Joe types here. And there was a break. There was a lull in the meeting. And I started getting blown up. It was like, hey, Xboxes are up in 10 minutes at Walmart. And I failed. You saw me fail. Right. You witnessed that. See, I didn't know it was official fail. I knew you were trying to get it. Oh, okay. We were trying to, like, you were waiting. I think that's where you were. You were right. waiting. All right. So since then, I got an email from B&H Photo. I buy a lot of gear from B&H Photo, a lot of computer and music gear over the years, microphones, things like that. Okay. Uh, yeah, my, I'd say they're probably my favorite place to buy things online. Okay. And uh, probably back in January or something, I had gotten this. Uh, I tried to go to their website and see if I could secure a console through them. And it's like, ah, if you're interested, 
fill out this deal here and then we'll keep you up to date with stock alerts or whatever. So uh, I got this email and I was like, hey, we've reserved a console for you. If you want it, follow this link here. You can't find it directly on the website. You've got to follow this link inside this email. And after I verified multiple times that I was at the website I thought I was going to, that I wasn't being fished or scammed, Kate, I successfully right. placed an order for an Xbox that's supposed to arrive tomorrow. Hey, there you go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, so are, are you going to take off some time to get to know your new Xbox? <laughs> yeah. I have a romantic vacation with my Xbox. Just bring it with me. Yeah. Uh, I will be playing some Xbox. Yes, correct. Is that what you're asking? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, anyway, victory, and I've been able to turn off the uh, notifications. Oh, so now you can sleep. Now I can sleep. Now I found peace with no notifications and way more video games than I could ever possibly play. Yeah. Matt's a happy guy now. Well, let's not get. <laughs> Don't don't uh, assume too much. Uh, yes, no, I mean correct. You're right, Kate. Thanks. I'm happy for you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm pleased. I'll let you know. It, it, it'll be a good time. I'm sure it'll be fun. Yeah, just owning this rare unicorn may be enough for me. You know, like, I don't need to play <laughs> that. Just the sweet victory of me securing one of these when they're still hard to get. Although it seems like it's starting to loosen up, I do feel like I've seen more available. I mean. They still instantly disappear when they become available online, but it seems like stock levels have been improving, maybe. I don't know. So if you're looking for one of these consoles, maybe in time for Christmas, you'll be able to get one. There you go. Yeah. We have been, uh, we we had some, we played with some friends the other night, and they had a Nintendo Switch, and the girls were like, oh my gosh, we need a Nintendo Switch. Yeah. And Monty told Finley who is our oldest, she's 11, if you can land a flip off the diving board this summer, like he just opened it up, it wasn't like you've got two weeks to do it. He said this summer, you can do it. You do a flip and, you know, all the way through, not belly flop, he'll buy her a switch. So a flip and then a dive? No, just like a flip off, off the diving board. So, I mean, it can't be a flop of a flip. So she can go feet in or not? She could go feet in. Yeah, yeah. Just has to get one rotation. Okay. Yeah. Well, come on. The sooner the better. If she gets this done I know. Like, today, is, does that mean you can... She started trying and she has not liked it and is asking <laughs> for a different deal. And Monty's like, nope, that's it. And Elliot, who's our daredevil... Uh, she has not made it all the way around and she has crashed and burned a couple of times. And the <laughs> pool where we go, it's got like an extra bouncy board. So I'm like, this is perfect. You've got so much space to get around and then hit the water. You're not going to like <laughs> still be turning and hit the water. Like if you were at my mom's pool where the diving board doesn't have a lot of bounce, like you're mm-hmm. right there. Monty thinks because they don't do trampolines, they're too scared to do flips off the diving board because they're not used to doing flips on trampolines. Oh, I see. A trampoline's a good baby step. Yeah. I guess, but I'm also like the poster child for um, anti-trampoline because my ankles were ruined on trampolines. Not just trampolines, but trampolines and, and basketball, but trampoline was like the one of the major, major injuries so i'm kind of like because you went flying off it or you hit the hard part of it or what uh no i rolled my ankle um so hard uh yeah i had to go to the emergency i've been bounced off a trampoline i've you know hit the the springs i've done every other injury but it's the rolled ankles that you just don't recover from and so i don't want that for them and i have told them that they are not allowed on trampolines and i sound like a really really like Horrible mom, because everybody's like, let the kids jump. Yep, horrible mother, Kate. Go on. I know. I do not like trampolines for my children. Have they jumped on trampolines? Yes. Do they have a secret code between the two of them that if they get the chance, they won't tell their mom? Yes. Do they always spill because they can't hold it in? (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Close, kids. You're almost there. I know. Almost successfully lying to your mother. Almost. But no. But you still have that uh, guilt. 
Yeah, but we've we've declined a couple of birthday parties at trampoline parks because wow. oh, at the trampoline parks, gotcha. Yeah, like at uh, a facility. Yeah, a trampoline facility. Yeah, which I would have loved as a child. 